Hey guys, so we are going to analyze and sketch the graph of a polynomial function with fractional exponents using the first and the second derivative. So when I start these problems out, I'm always going to start by finding my x and y intercepts. So if I'm finding my y intercept first, I'm going to set x equal to 0 and solve. So in this case, I just get y equals 0. That's nice and easy. So I have the point 0, 0 as a y intercept. I'm also going to find the x-intercept. So to find the x-intercept, I set y equal to 0. So I'm going to have 2x to the 5 thirds minus 5x to the 4 thirds equal to 0. When we see fractional exponents, we tend to get a little freaked out about how we're going to factor those. So you're just going to do it the same way you do your integer exponent ones. I'm going to factor out whatever is the smallest exponent. So out of 5 thirds and 4 thirds, 4 thirds is going to be the smallest. So if I pull out an x to the 4 thirds, I'm left with 2x to the 1 third minus 5 on the inside of that set of parentheses. Over here, this factor is just going to give me x equals 0. And here, I'm going to write this guy as a 2 times the cube root of x minus 5 equal to 0. If I add the 5 over, divide by 2, and then cube, I'm going to get x is 125 over 8, which is approximately 15.6. So my x-intercept that I get from this factor over here is going to be 15.6 comma 0. And this 0, 0 I already got up here, so I'm not going to rewrite that. Once I have those x and y intercepts, the next thing that I'm going to look for is my first derivative. Remember the first derivative is going to tell us if my original function y is increasing or decreasing. So when I find y prime, I'm just going to use the power rule. 5 times 2 gives me 10, so I have 10 over 3. Subtract 1 from 5 thirds, I'm going to get 2 thirds. 4 thirds times 5 is going to give me 20 thirds. And then 1 from 4 thirds gives me to the 1 third. So now same thing, when I'm solving for my critical values of the first derivative, I need to look for where the first derivative is equal to 0 and where the first derivative is undefined. Don't forget that undefined piece. Luckily in this one, there's no places where my function is going to be undefined. And by my function, I mean my first derivative. So all I have to worry about is where the first derivative is equal to 0. So I'm going to set this equal to 0, and I'm going to pull out a GCF just like I did when I factored the example for the x-intercept over here. So in this case, I'm going to pull out a 10 thirds. And then I'm also going to pull out, again, that smaller exponent, which in this case is the 1 third. So now left in the parentheses here, in order to get this term, the 10x to the 2 thirds, I need an x to the 1 third here. Minus, in order to get a 20 thirds here, I'm going to need to multiply by 2. And then the x to the 1 third, I don't need anything for x. So that just stays equal to 0. Again, this factor over here just gives me x is equal to 0. And this factor, I'm going to end up with the cube root of x is equal to 2. I cube both sides, I get x is equal to 8. So these are my two critical values that I'm going to stick on my number line for y prime. Now what I need to do is test an x value in each of these three intervals to see if my first derivative is positive or negative. If that first derivative is positive, I know my function y is increasing. If my first derivative is negative, I know that my function y is decreasing. When you're plugging in to the first derivative, plug into the factored version. It's a lot easier. And all you're worried about is sign. I don't really care what the actual number is. I really just care if it's positive or negative. So you're just kind of doing like rough math here. So for example, if I were to plug in negative 1, I'll do 1 down here. If I were to plug in negative 1, I have 10 over 3 times the cube root of negative 1 times the cube root of negative 1 minus 2. And again, this is y prime, so I plugged into y prime. I chose negative 1 because it's less than 0 and because I know the cube root of it. I'm not going to choose 2 because I don't know the cube root of 2. That doesn't make any sense. So go with something you know the cube root of. The cube root of negative 1 is negative 1 times 10 third. That's going to be a negative number over there. In my parentheses here, the cube root of negative 1 is negative. 
negative 1 minus 2 is also negative. A negative times a negative is a positive. Again, I don't really care what the number is. I just care if it's positive or negative. So that's all I'm checking for. If I pick a number between 0 and 8, say I pick 1, this is nice and easy, right? So the cube root of 1 is positive times a positive is positive. The cube root of 1 is positive 1 minus 2 is negative. So now I have a negative times a positive. So that's going to end up being negative between 0 and 8. And then if I pick something bigger than 8, again, I want to pick something I know the cube root of. Let's go with 27. Cube root of 27 is 3 times 10 thirds is going to be positive. The cube root of 27 is 3 minus 2 is positive. Positive times a positive, okay, I am over here. So now this tells me that my function y is increasing from negative infinity to 0 and 8 to infinity. And my original function y is decreasing from 0 to 8. I also have a relative maximum at 0, 0. I know it's 0, 0 because I already found it up here with my intercept. And I also have a relative minimum at x is equal to 8. You're always going to want to plot your intercepts, your maxes and mins, and when we get to the second derivative, the points of inflection. So I'm going to go ahead and find the y value for x is equal to 8 so that I can plot that when I get to it. And again, now I'm plugging 8 into the y function, not into y prime. So when I plug 8 into y, I have 2 times the cube root of 8 to the 5th power minus 5 times the cube root of 8 to the 4th power. So when I do this without a calculator, cube root of 8 is 2, and then I have a 2 to the 5th. I'm actually going to leave this as 2 times 2 to the 5th minus 5. Again, the cube root of 8 is 2, so that's going to be a 2 to the 4th. So now this becomes 2 to the 6th minus 5 times 2 to the 4th. I don't have a calculator for a problem like this, so I'm leaving these with a base of 2 so that now I can factor out a 2 to the 4th. So I'm left with a 2 squared minus 5. This is just keeping my numbers small so that I can do this math in my head without having the numbers get too big. So 2 to the 4th is 16. 2 squared is 4 minus 5 is negative 1, negative 16. That's way easier than doing 2 to the 5th times 2 and subtracting this whole mess. This just makes life easier. So I know that a, plot that, a point that I'll be able to plot for my relative min is going to be 8 comma negative 16. And I'm even going to star this in a different color so that I know this is important when I get back. So, so far the points that I'm going to be able to plot for y are this minimum, this x-intercept, and this y-intercept over here. So now that I have that first derivative, the next thing that I'm going to go to is my second derivative. So now for y prime prime, I'm taking the derivative of this guy over here. So y prime prime is going to be 20 over 9 x to the negative one-third, again, I'm just using my power rule here, minus 20 over 9, x to the negative two-thirds. When I factor, I'm going to take out a 20 over 9, and I'm also going to take out an x to the negative two-thirds. Again, I'm taking that smaller fractional exponent. What's left inside the parentheses here is going to be an x to the one-third minus 1. And I'm setting the second derivative equal to 0 to find my possible points of inflection. You also need to check where the second derivative is undefined, just like you did in the first derivative. This thing is going to be undefined where x is equal to 0, because this is technically in the denominator here. And this factor is also going to give you x equals 0. This factor over here, I have the cube root of x is equal to 1. I cube both sides, I get x is equal to 1. These are my two possible points of inflection, so I'm going to put x is 0 and x is 1 on a number line labeled y prime prime, because this is my second derivative that I'm now testing into. Same as with the first derivative, when I pick values in here, I want to pick things that I know the cube root of, and I'm also going to rewrite this factor over here in a friendlier way for while I'm evaluating. So I'm going to write this as 20 over 9 times the cube root of x squared, so I know that that's in the denominator, times the cube root of x minus 1. So if I pick something less than 0 that I know the cube root of, I'm going to go with negative 1. The cube root of negative 1 is negative, squared is positive, so this whole term is positive. 
root of negative 1 is negative 1 minus 1 is negative. Negative times a positive is a negative, so I'm negative over here. If I pick something between 0 and 1, say I pick 1 eighth, the cube root of 1 eighth is 1 half. 1 half squared is a fourth. That's positive. The cube root of 1 eighth is 1 half minus 1 is negative. Positive times a negative is a negative, so I'm negative between 0 and 1. If I pick a number greater than 1, again, I want something I know the cube root of, so I'm going to go with x equals 8. The cube root of 8 is 2, squared is 4, this is going to be positive. Cube root of 8 is 2 minus 1, that's also going to be positive. Positive times a positive gives me positive from over here. So now this number line is telling me that my original function y is concave down from negative infinity to 0, and also from 0 to 1. My graph y is then concave up from 1 to infinity, and at x equals 1, I have a point of inflection. So what I'm going to do right now is find the y value for that point of inflection by plugging x equals 1 into y. So I'm going to find y of 1, which is just going to be 2 times 1 to the 5 thirds minus 5 times 1 to the 4 thirds. These are just ones. That's nice. So it's really just 2 minus 5. That's negative 3. So I'm going to need to plot the point 1, negative 3, which is a point of inflection. I'm going to put another yellow star by this. At this point, I've done all the hard work. I have all of the information that I need to now graph this function. You don't need a ton of space to graph this thing. It's just a rough sketch. So I'm going to go down in this left-hand corner over here. I'm going to make sure I'm black again. Bottom left corner, I'm going to give myself a little xy axis. And all of those yellow stars, I'm going to plot. And I'm going to plot my graph in a different color so it pops up nice. So I'm going to graph the point 0, 0, which was a, which was a y-intercept. I'm going to graph the point 15.60. That was also, that was an x-intercept. So I'm not going to count out 15 over here. That's a waste of my time. I'm just going to put a line, label it 15.6, and plot a point. This is just a sketch. Don't go crazy. I'm also going to plot this relative minimum of 8, negative 16. 8 has to be about in the middle, and then negative 16 I'll put way down here, 8, negative 16. So that's 1, 2, 3 of the 4 yellow stars I need. So now I also need the point 1, negative 3. So 1's going to have to be way over here and way down here if we want to make this work. So 1, negative 3. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4 points for y. These four points are going to separate my graph into each of the pieces that I need to sketch. So now what I'm going to do is work left to right, looking at my x values and using my number lines to sketch each curve in each section. So always furthest left is negative infinity. So the first section I'm looking at is negative infinity to x equals 0 because that's the first point that I've plotted. When I look at y prime, negative infinity to 0 is this section right here y prime is positive, so that means my function y is increasing. So that means from left to right my graph is going up, so I have to be coming at 0, 0 from down here. The second derivative gives me shape. So from negative infinity to 0, the second derivative is negative, which means my graph is concave down. That means it's shaped down. So as I'm coming up to 0, I'm curved down. So this section of the graph is going to look something like that. From 0 to 1, that's my next two x values, that's the next section that I'm looking at. 0 to 1 on my first derivative lies on this piece. So that means that my original function y is decreasing since the first derivative is negative, which makes sense. I have to go down to get from this point to this point. If this point was up here, then something would be wrong. So I know that I'm going down, I'm decreasing. Again, I'm looking from x equals 0 to x equals 1. So now I'm going to look at that second derivative number line. From 0 to 1, my second derivative is negative, I'm concave down. So I'm decreasing and concave down, so that's going to look something like that. Now, at the point 1, negative 3, I had a point of inflection, so I'm changing concavity from concave down to concave up. From 1 to 8, my first derivative, I'm still in this section, so I'm still decreasing, that makes sense. But now I just change the shape of the graph to kind of make it curve up a little bit. Again, this is a sketch. So sometimes you might have to erase or kind of like shade with your pencil if it just comes out kind of weird. So I'm going to make this go concave down, concave 
up. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Now my next section I'm looking at is from x equals 8 and then to 15.6, right? That's the other point that I have plotted. So from 8 on in my first derivative, I'm increasing. Again, makes sense. I'm going up. I'd be more concerned if this next point was below negative 16. And then my second derivative from x equals 8 to 15.6, that's this section over here. My second derivative is positive. I'm concave up. So I know that this function is now just going to increase and be concave up through that 15.6. Whoop, didn't come out great. That's fine. So I'm going to increase and come up through that 15.6. And there we go. I don't have any other points to graph. I'm done. Beauty. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Have a great day.